What's going on everybody? I'm Greg Peters here with the Car Passion Channel and today I'm bringing you a long awaited video and that is the clutch install. Not real graceful but thread one of these bolts back in. It's so heavy. I am going to replace that as well. Not good enough. That's the first time this car has ever chirped second gear. Definitely working. Now what I've got here is a Clutch Masters FX400 clutch. And how I chose this clutch is Clutch Masters actually contacted me and they asked me if I'd be interested in doing an install video in exchange for their clutch. And I figured how perfect. I have wanted to do a clutch video for you guys for so long. The clutch and broken boosted just started slipping. <laughs> So although I've never tried a Clutch Masters clutch, what a perfect opportunity to try out something new. So I'm gonna let you guys know how it feels compared to a stock clutch. This specifically is a six puck. And if you wanna learn some of the differences between say a six puck and a four puck and a sprung, unsprung, single disc, twin disc, all the things you might hear about when you're talking about clutches, I got a link down below in the description to an article that I spent a very long time writing to help you guys out and help you guys understand clutches a little bit better. So check that out if you're interested. Now in classic Car Passion Channel style, I'm going to be doing this clutch the most difficult way that I possibly could, which is on the ground by myself with hand tools. So since I'm doing it the hardest way possible, if you guys have things that help you do it easier like power tools and a lift and stuff like that, it's good for you. It's going to be even easier. But I know a lot of you out there probably are going to end up doing it just like I'm going to show in this video on the ground, possibly even by yourself. So I'm going to show you how to do it that way and hopefully it's gonna make your life easier. Now replacing a clutch is something that pretty much all manual transmission Miatas are gonna have to have done at some point and shops charge a lot of money for that kind of repair. We're talking three, four, five hundred dollars just in labor alone. So hopefully this video will save you guys some money and one thing I gotta do before I get started is I gotta get into some clothes, change out of this Clutch Master swag that I just put on and put something on that I don't care about ruining because I will tell you right now that changing a clutch is a very dirty job. I'll see you guys in the front yard at Broken Boosted. Oh, almost forgot. You know I like to hook you guys up, so I got a discount code car passion, one word. You're going to use that at clutchmasters.com to save you 10% on any purchase. All right, now I'm going. See ya. So obviously safety is number one here. You're gonna be spending most of the time underneath the car and you don't want it to fall on you. So get a good set of jack stands, make sure you're nice and secure. You also wanna get as high as possible to give you lots of room to work. For the rear, I don't like to put the car on four jack stands cause it gets a little bit wobbly. So I'll usually just do blocks like that. Give it a good earthquake test. Make sure it's not gonna fall down and you're ready to start working. But the only thing you have to do inside the car is remove this whole center console, which is just a Phillips head screw in here, a couple in here, and a couple right here on the other side there, and then unthread your shift knob and you can pull this whole thing out. It's really simple. And I'm really gonna go through the easy steps pretty quick because I wanna spend more time focusing on the difficult things. Now the boot's loose, but you have to get it off. And this plastic ring right here, makes it pretty much a bear. You can spray some WD-40 or, or something in there to get it to slide off. You can see the ground down there, and when you drop the transmission, the shifter will come with it. So normally the next step would be removing the exhaust, but as you can see on Broken Boosted, I've just been running open downpipe, so I've got no exhaust in place. Removing the exhaust just considers of removing two bolts and a couple hangers and you just take the whole system out. You have to drain your transmission and that's done with this plug right here. And for maximum safety, you should loosen your fill plug with that square thing right there. Just in case that's stripped, you wanna find out sooner rather than later. That actually looks pretty good. It's always a good day when you drain your transmission and no teeth come out. Next up, looking at the differential here where the drive shaft goes in, you've got four nuts. Take those nuts off and you'll be able to remove your drive shaft. Once the back of the drive shaft is unbolted, the front just slides out of the transmission. 
Now that that's out, I'll continue disconnecting things from the transmission, such as the speedometer cable. Another thing you'll have to disconnect way up there is your, I think that's the reverse light switch. There's a reverse light switch and a neutral switch. I get them confused. But that is one of them, the gold thing right there. You don't necessarily have to unthread it from the trans. It has a couple really easy connectors that just unplug. The wires off one of the switches looks like this. That's the one I just showed you. They're just bullet connectors. You pull on them and they come undone. There's no clip or no button, you know, anything like that to unplug them. And this is what the other one looks like. It's just a single blade on each wire and those actually have a little button you have to press to disconnect them, but it's pretty easy to do just with one hand. And for both switches, they do not have polarity. So that means you can switch these wires back and forth. You don't have to mark them, you know, which one goes to which. This is an extra five speed transmission that I have. I can show you the switches a little bit better. Here's the one on the driver side and it's just got the little bullet connectors. And then there's another one on the very top of the transmission on the passenger side. This right here, and it's got those blade connectors. Next up is to get the PPF or power plant frame out of the way. My strategy is to remove the front three bolts completely. And of the two back bolts, the one closest to the front of the car, I completely remove. And then the very back one I leave in, but just loosen it. And that's gonna let the PPF pivot out of the way and allow me to drop the transmission. I'll remove the transmission bolts and there are some easy ones which you can see right there and there's some hard ones they get harder and harder as you go around the transmission up to the top and it pretty much boils down to getting creative with your extensions and your universals and stuff like that so you can see I got a real long extension don't know if I'm gonna use that or not but I'm just gonna try to start putting stuff together and see what works best I got a universal I got a swivelly we're gonna get those top bolts out so I got my Roger right here completely out of focus and then at the end of that long extension you can see it's on the top transmission bolt it's pretty clearly visible from the from the ground you'll see it it's just kind of hard to get to so here's my progress I did end up removing the downpipe I got the very top bolt out it was extremely difficult let me forewarn you on that one most of the bottom bolts you can get with a box end wrench or even a double wrench setup like this to make it even easier Sometimes, if you don't have power tools, but you need a lot of power, you gotta bootleg it a little bit, make your own tools. Doing stuff like this, I know it seems ghetto, but in tough situations, it can be a lifesaver. I'll typically leave one of the easy bolts in there because I don't want the transmission to start separating before I'm ready. Next up, you've got the slave cylinder. So this is looking through the passenger wheel well and it's that thing bolted to the side of the transmission. You got the two 12 millimeter bolts there. You don't have to remove the slave completely, but you do have to remove it from the transmission. It's easiest for me to unbolt it from underneath the car, but I just wanted to give you a visual from here. That's one of the bolts we're gonna be removing, and then exactly opposite that bolt, up on top where you can't see, there's another bolt. Once you remove the bolts, you can free up Ooh, there we go. You can free up the slave and I'll just kind of push it off to the side. Do not push the clutch pedal now that you've disconnected your slave cylinder. You've also got on the side there a little 10 millimeter bolt that holds the harness in place. And there's another one. If you look just past the clutch fork, there's another 10 millimeter bolt right there that holds the slave cylinder hard line to the transmission. So this is really the, the tedious part. If you try to drop the transmission with one of these things attached, it's not gonna be a good time. So if you remember to detach everything, the transmission is not that bad to drop. All right, now on the passenger side, you can see where the slave was. And if you look just above it, you got three 14 millimeters and those hold your starter in place. Now you don't have to remove the starter, at least on the 1.6s. I don't know about the 1.8s, but anyways, on the 1.6s, you don't have to remove the starter to get the trans out, but you do have to remove all three of the 14 millimeters. One of them, that bottom one there, is actually a nut, and sometimes you have to put a wrench on the front side, you know, on the other side to hold it in place to get that out. So next is to remove those 14s. 
I'm coming back to the extra transmission again to, uh, to show you guys with a little more, more clarity. Those three holes right there are the holes for the starter bolt. So those are gonna be the 14s. So once you've been down here for a while, maybe, I don't know, an hour or so, depending on how much you've struggled, after the transmission bolts are removed, it's time to remove the transmission itself. Hey, get out of here. <laughs> Once you're here, I use my knee to prop up the, the back of the transmission so it can't land directly on my nards. And uh, I'm gonna use my hands like this. You can at this point pull the PPF kind of away from the transmission. But once you do that, oh, break it free, just like that. Ah, okay. Now, I got a transmission on my chest. Not real graceful, but it's out. Again, it's best to do that if you have more than one person or maybe you could use a jack. Now, while I have the transmission sitting here, I'm gonna replace the throwout bearing. Here's a new throwout bearing that came with the Clutchmaster's kit. And the job of this part right here is when you put your foot on the clutch pedal, this pushes against the clutch itself and it lets the engine spin. When you have a bad throwout bearing, every time you push the clutch pedal in, that's when you'll hear it squealing and squeaking. So this one's not necessarily bad, but you always wanna replace this if you're doing a clutch job. It's gonna be a little hard to show how I take this off, but once it's off, I'll show you how it's done. You basically have to reach one finger over the top, one finger over the bottom, and you're opening up a clip. It's gonna let you pull this off. This is your pivot ball. That's what the clutch fork pivots on. And it just clips in here like that. So all you're doing is reaching your fingers in and opening up the clip like that and slipping it off of that ball. Now I'll give this a little bit of a wipe down. All my, all my parts here, especially the metal on metal parts and then just put a little layer of uh, grease on there before I install this new bearing. Just slip the bearing onto the fork, slip it onto the input shaft, and then to get it to clip back onto the pivot ball, that's it right there. You can pull on it and you see it can't come off, so that's your new throwout bearing installed. Next step is to remove the clutch from the flywheel, but you'll notice if you just throw a ratchet on one of the bolts, it spins the engine and you can't loosen it. So you could use an impact, but not everyone has an impact. So you can use this Car Passion Channel Pro Tip to get your clutch off. Thread one of these bolts back into the engine here. I'm just gonna wedge it into one of the teeth on the flywheel. And now, you can loosen the bolts. And it's even easier with two hands, trust me. Here's the clutch that came out and it's actually got life left in it. You know, it just didn't have the holding power for um, the torque that this engine is making. Good, but not good enough. You can use the same method with the pry bar to get the flywheel bolts out. They are gonna be quite a bit tighter, but still doable without an impact. Oh, there we go. This is where it does get a lot easier if you have access to a lift because you have so much more leverage when you're standing up. You can fit bigger tools in. Oh yeah. Oh my god, stock flywheels. Oh, it's so heavy. Now you can also see I've got a nice little fresh stream of oil here from a rear main seal leak. I am going to replace that as well. Now is the time to do it. I highly recommend it. Alright, so I got a, got a seal puller here. And the only thing you really have to be careful of is not to scratch the crank or or the ceiling surface. So I'm just gonna try to get a good hook in there and hopefully this thing comes out easy. I was working on this thing for a while and I missed filming the thing actually popping loose, but I got it to pop loose. You can use flathead, um, any kind of hook tool. You can really use anything you want as long as you don't scratch the surface of this crankshaft right here. You don't really want to scratch the outside either, but it doesn't matter as much as scratching the crankshaft where it's actually rotating inside the seal because then you'll just have a leaky rear main seal again. So after you clean all this, got your new seal here. 
and you probably want to put a little bit of oil on it to help it slip on but pretty much just get it right on the back of the crankshaft then once you get it started you start tapping kind of in a circular motion just like this you can push the seal too far in if you're tapping it in with a with another tool or something and then once it's in there trying to get it out without damaging it is borderline impossible and then you'll need to buy a new rear main seal so i kind of like this method once you're done the seal should look like this it'll be basically completely flush with the uh, aluminum the little aluminum carrier you don't want it to be higher on one side than the other and you don't want to push it too far into the motor all right, let's talk about the flywheel for a second. You can definitely reuse your stock flywheel when you put an aftermarket clutch in your car, but I highly recommend that you get it resurfaced. You can see the surface on my stock flywheel. Uh, it just definitely has some, some scars from slipping and just general use. So I'm actually gonna be using the Fidanza aluminum flywheel out of my old 1.6 build. Uh, all I had to do was throw a new friction plate on it. You can see the old one there has a deep groove uh, from you know just tons of wear and drag racing and, and all kinds of stuff. So I threw a new friction plate on there. It's basically like a, like a brand new flywheel at this point. The only thing I have to do is replace the pilot bearing. With so in order to get the old pilot bearing out, you want to take a socket that's just about the same size as the bearing, maybe a tiny bit smaller. Put it right there. Ha -ha. It takes a little bit of force, but it just pops out. Now this part's going to be a little bit trickier. I got to take the new pilot bearing, get it installed. I threw a little bit of grease on it just to help it get in there. And if I have trouble with this, what I can do is freeze the bearing and then heat up the flywheel with the hair dryer that I keep in my car and it'll help the two mate a little bit easier. You should be able to go in just like this. Oh. <laughs> you can see there it's pretty much perfectly flush with the flywheel surface. Before I put the clutch on, Give that little spray down with a spray cleaner. You want to make sure this surface is really, really clean. Same with the surface of the uh, pressure plate here. Just give it a quick little spray and wipe down before you put it all together. And be careful not to get grease on the pads of the clutch. Now, most clutch discs are going to have a little sticker like this. It says flywheel side. There is a way to put these in backwards. So if you don't have a sticker, if you're ever in doubt, you can see the, the part of the hub with the springs kind of sticks out. That's always going to go towards the pressure plate and the completely flat side is going to go towards the flywheel. So I'll drop the, the uh, disc into the pressure plate there and you got to kind of stick your finger through so you don't drop it. There's little dowel pins that are going to locate the pressure plate. Let's see, is it like that? Okay, that looks like it right there. So I'm just gonna throw a couple bolts in place loosely so everything stays. And before you go any further, take your clutch alignment tool, put it through the clutch disc, all the way into the pilot bearing. And what I do is as I tighten the bolts, I just wanna make sure that I can easily slide this tool in and out. There is a very specific pattern. You have to tighten the pressure plate bolts and you don't just wanna go in a circle. What I do is skip one, skip one, skip two. So I'll get one to where it's just kind of hand tight, skip one, go to the next one, hand tight again, skip one, go to the next one, hand tight, and then I'll skip two. And if you keep doing that pattern, you'll be going in a, you know, somewhat of a spiral cross pattern. And you don't want to just go from all the way loose to fully torqued. You want to tighten the bolts in stages. So you're gradually stressing that spring in the pressure plate instead of, you know, torquing it all the way on one side and then it's all off kilter and stuff. like that I'll keep going and going until I hit my torque spec on all the bolts after that's all torqued down make sure that your alignment tool can easily slide in and out all the way through the pilot bearing if it's hard to get in and out guess what else is gonna be hard to get in your transmission shaft and you do not want to be struggling when you're holding the weight of the transmission up okay I'm not gonna lie to you this is, at least for me, the most difficult and most physically demanding part of the entire clutch job. Here we go. Woo! All right, 
That was a new record. I don't think I've done it that fast before. Once you get it up in there, throw a bolt in there. Throw a transmission bolt in so it's got no way of coming undone. Once you got one bolt all the way threaded in my hand, you're fine. It won't, it won't come out. All right, if you did your transmission like that, you are a beast. But at any rate, if you got it in at all, what I want you to do right now is grab yourself one of these and enjoy a reward. If you're of legal drinking age, of course, and don't drive afterwards. It's gonna be a while before we get this thing finished, so you don't really have to worry about it. Well earned. Oh, you like this? You like this bottle opener? Well, if you wanna win a bag of Clutch Master swag like you've seen in this video for free, all you gotta do is hop on my last Instagram post, the one where I'm holding the clutch, tag three friends, and you're automatically entered to win. Another way you could get the transmission up into place is by putting it onto a floor jack and then having one person on either side of the trans making sure it can't tip off and then you slowly just jack it up into place and you, you can work it on that way. This way is just the way I like to do it especially if I'm by myself. It's just it's usually pretty quick. I wouldn't necessarily say it's easy but it's fast but if you do it this way you just got to be really careful because that transmission is heavy. So hooking everything back up is the exact opposite of how you took it apart. You're going to put all the transmission bolts in and tighten them down, hook up your neutral and safety switches, reinstall your drive shaft and your exhaust system, bolt up the PPF, put your speedometer cable back into place, Reinstall the slave cylinder and bleed the clutch. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll leave a link in the description to one of my other videos. And then when you're ready to fill the transmission back up with fluid, you do it through this plug right here. And how you know it's full is it will start spilling fluid out of that hole and then you just replace the plug. Once you have it buttoned all back up, you're ready to take the car out for a spin and that's where I'm gonna pick it back up. I'll do a quick break in on the clutch and then let you know my thoughts and feelings on how it feels. Okay, we're getting ready for our first drive and I'm gonna go out and start breaking in the clutch. Now, make sure your car's in neutral because if it's in first and for some reason the clutch is not disengaging, you might drive through your garage and you don't wanna do that. So just make sure the car's in neutral, put your clutch pedal to the floor and start it up. Typically six puck clutches do break in quite a bit faster than a full face, but I'd recommend just taking it easy for a full tank and then you know you're good to go. I got a brand new flywheel, brand new pressure plate, and brand new disc on the clutch, so all those things need time to become friends. I sound like a complete noob obviously because this is a brand new clutch to me and it's already grabbing pretty hard. This is definitely gonna be a more grabby clutch because it's a six puck. And since I put that super light flywheel in there, which is less than half the weight of a stock flywheel, it does make it a little bit more difficult to get the car off the line. So right now I'm just gonna do some city driving and I don't wanna slip the clutch excessively, just normal launches and stuff to help get this disc broken in before I really hammer on it. I've put some miles on the clutch now and it's definitely pretty aggressive. This clutch in particular, the FX400 with the six puck disc, probably a little bit too much from what the average Miata owner is looking for. And if you're running 200 horsepower, you don't need a clutch quite this gnarly. I personally wanted something really aggressive. So if you're looking for something pretty aggressive, this is a good clutch. It's still drivable. One good thing about it is the pedal itself is really light. So if you went with this pressure plate, but a full face disc instead, it's gonna drive like stock and it will hold quite a bit more power than the stock clutch. Clutch, and that's all most people need. So don't forget about my coupon code carpassionclutchmasters.com if you wanna check out another one of their clutches or this one. I do like it personally. So this is kinda of how I tend to start out with a six buck. I'll just rev it up to maybe 1500 and try to hold it right there while the clutch slips. Let it catch on its own. Don't pull your foot off the pedal until it's done catching. You get a little bit of shutter there. That's just uh, inherent with the six puck, and you're on your way. Would anybody uh, like me to play them the song of my people? Dude, 
I don't know if you guys could hear that, but I just chirp second gear. That's the first time this car has ever chirp second gear, and it's because that clutch hooks up so good. So, definitely working. See, if I can back it into the driveway, that's smooth. Can't be that hard to drive, right? So that's my install and review of the Clutchmasters FX400. The install portion of the video pretty much works for any type of clutch you're gonna install into your Miata, it's kinda all the same. Now the big reason why I wanted to put this clutch in, aside from holding the extra power, is I wanted something that was really grabby because when you go drifting, and you wanna do good clutch kicks, you need a clutch that grabs really hard so you get those tires spinning right when you want. And this weekend, I'm taking Broken Boosted drifting. So I'll see you there. Back from the dead. Never know what you're gonna hear or see in Rice Alley.